Hi everyone, it's Tom Milner here from F1 Schools HQ. Today we're here to bring you an exciting tutorial from our amazing CFD partner ANSYS. In this tutorial you'll hear from Becca Davies, an application engineer at ANSYS on how to get to groups with ANSYS Discovery. The tutorial covers importing your CAD files, using file, feature and physics trees, different modes and demonstrates simple fluid simulations to get you started on your own CFD journey. Make sure you download ANSYS for absolutely free. Head over to f1schools.com now to download your software. For this demonstration, we're going to be going through a simple fluid simulation that may be helpful for your team looking at your F1 car for F1 in schools. To start, we're going to have to import our geometry, which I've already done here. And to do so, we're going to go to the three bars at the top left, which is our file menu. From here, you can press open or insert geometry. If your team have signed up to ANSYS and you have the full version of Discovery, you're going to be able to import your inventor or fusion assembly and part files. If you are using the student version, then you'll only be able to import a file type such as a step file. So you may have to convert your assembly file into a step before being able to import it into Discovery. Once you have your geometry imported, it'll look something like this. We do have our feature tree on the left here, which we can expand and see all of our parts. To start our simulation, we're going to have to move from model mode, which we're currently in, into explore mode. When we're going to explore mode, the simulation tab will automatically open. And here you can see all of the options we have for setting up our simulation. For this case, we're going to be wanting external flow, which is at the top left here. Once we select this, we will be given a box with a lot of arrows to select our inlet from. For this, we're going to want the arrow that points towards the car as our inlet. It will then also want a grounding plane, which is quite easy for this as we're going to be using the ground. Once we've done this, we'll see that our physics tree has also expanded. And we'll also see in our feature tree that our parts have been excluded from simulation. And this is because they have now been treated as non-slip walls, which we can see in our physics tab. To keep things looking clean, we can now hide our parts so that we can concentrate on our physics tree. The first thing we're going to do for our simulation is change our fluid from water to air. To do so, we're going to hover over water and right click and then select edit. From here, we have a drop down where we can select air. You'll now see that air has been selected on the left hand side here and we can press escape to remove that. You'll see that our car has been selected as structural steel and that is because that is the default material within Discovery. You can change this in the same way that you change the fluid if you'd like to find a material that replicates your car a little more. For this case, we're just going to keep it as default. So for setting up our simulation, we're going to be changing our flow inlet from 0.05 meters per second to 20. This is just an example value that we're going to be using for this demonstration. You'll also see that our flow outlet beneath our flow inlet is set as zero pascals as a default for pressure. We're going to keep this as the default. We're also going to be adding some local sizing to our simulation. So to do this, first of all, we're going to hide our enclosure by selecting the eye here. We're then going to go to local, which is in the fidelity section. And we're going to highlight our whole car. For the value, we're going to select this as five millimeters. 
and we need to be careful that our units are the correct ones that we want. Now that we have a sizing for our whole car, we're going to go into a couple of key areas and add a bit more refinement. So we're going to hover over our front wing and double click, which should highlight the entire part. We're then going to change this value to 2.5 millimeters. And repeating this step, we're going to do the same for the back wing. So we're now going to start our simulation as we have everything set up. And before doing so, we're going to make sure that we still have our enclosure. To start our simulation, we're going to go to the solve button, which is in the right hand corner and select this. You'll see our progress bar in the middle. And if you hover over, it'll say that it's solving. Once it's complete, it should say complete. And as a default, we have vectors selected. So if I deselect these for the time being, and then I select our contours, at the moment we have it as highest value on all faces. We're now going to change the surface display priority to inner, and that will allow us to see inside our bounding box and around our car. As a default, we are showing our velocity contours and you can see the magnitude of the velocity on the side here. This can be changed to static pressure if you want to have a look at the pressure around the car. Now that we have a very simple solution, we're going to go through a few tricks that we can use. So if you're using a computer with a lower graphics card capability, then we have a trick that we can use to maximize your output. So what we do is we select this symmetry plane, which is in the simulation tab up here. And we're going to select one of the side surfaces. So for this case, we're going to select this right hand side here and press that this is a symmetry wall. Now our symmetry wall should actually be going through the middle of our car. So in order to move that symmetry wall so that it's not on the bounding box, we can go into design at the top here and select move. Because that wall is what we had selected before we pressed move, it is already highlighted and we can just move it across. But if not, we can then select the wall after and do the same process. So we can now using this origin, pull this wall along until we feel it is around the middle of the car. You'll now see our bounding box has been essentially cut in half. So now when our solution is being solved, you'll see that it's only taking half of the space that we were originally using. You can still see the whole car, but instead it's only now simulating around this half section. This method will use a lot less of your GPU RAM and can be great if you do not have a high spec GPU. We can now play around with some of our settings. So we can have a look at our velocity again. And having these gradients on means that we can get some very nice pictures that you may want to use for posters. When we're having a look at our pressure, however, we may want to go into our settings here and toggle gradient style. And this is because we can now see a little bit more about what's happening with our pressure. And this may influence how we change our enclosure around our car. Before we change anything with our enclosure though, we're going to have a look at our monitors. So there are two monitors that will already be set up as a default, which you can see in this tab here and that is max velocity and your pressure drop. So if I press on these, you'll see a graph appear. We can also set up our own 
monitors. And by doing that, we go into simulation tab at the top, press down on monitors here, and we can select a custom monitor. So for this again, I'm going to hide our enclosure and I'm going to hover over our front wing, select that and select a variable of force. And for this, we're going to select it in the Z direction following our flow field. If we press accept, we'll now get another monitor here. You can create any custom monitor you'd like using the variables from this dropdown. And you can highlight these on your simulation page, but you can also hide them quickly by selecting this button here. If we bring back our enclosure, we can also have a look at other post-processing options. So while we have contours on now, we can hide these and select our vectors instead. And for this one, we'll have it curved selected and we can alter these as necessary. So we're going to filter by gradient. We're going to reduce down our thickness and have a look at our vectors. So if we go back onto our velocity here, we can see our vectors going around our wheels and going behind our car. So you can have a look at any zones where there may be recirculation and any other factors that you might want to consider in design changes. If we go back to our contours now and have a look at our static pressure, we're going to have a look at changing our enclosure as we can see that the pressure isn't ideal around this surface. So in order to do this, we're going to go back to our design tab and move. And we're going to select this wall here and drag it out by another about 50 millimeters. Once we've done so, it's going to start solving again. So it may take a little bit of time. But we can now see our pressure that is in front of our car and going around the car, around our bounding box as well is a lot more what we'd expect. If we want to have a look further into this, when we added our local sizing for our wings, we could also add local refinement around our wheels to capture a little bit more physics around those. So now we have a nice simulation and the main thing that we need to remember now is to save. So we go back to our file menu here and press save as. Once you've saved it, you'll also be able to save them as new versions so that you don't have to continue saving as as separate files. I hope this demonstration has been helpful and thank you very much for listening. Once again, I'd just like to thank our global CFD partner Antis for providing this content and to Becca Davies for stepping us through the basics of simple fluid simulations in Antis Discovery. We'll be creating more helpful tutorials over the course of the season, so if you found this tutorial useful, please keep an eye out for our next Antis tutorial. Thanks to all our teachers and students for listening, and from everyone at F1 Schools HQ, best of luck with your up and coming seasons. <laughs>